fiber lasers once again, but this time I'm making not only the PCB, but also the stainless steel stencil. That's right, this is a homemade but quite precise stainless steel stencil for SMD soldering that will go together with this PCB. And this just took me 30 seconds to make it. You heard me right, 30 seconds. That's awesome. This is the Kamaker B6 fiber laser engraver and this time it's of 60 watts. Damn, that's a lot of power so please be careful and always wear your goggles. So today we are making an awesome homemade PCBs with very good tracks of 0.2 millimeters but also the stainless steel stencil. Test it out and see the results. Basically I also want to try to cut these stainless steel sheets and create a very precise and small stencil for SMD soldering. We also put the machine to test with other materials, so this should be fun. As always the links for more information about this powerful machine are below in the description. So let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. I have a lot of power in my hands, so let's be safe. Always wear your safety glasses and it's also good to add a protective shield when engraving. Well, today I'll be using this Marker B6 fiber laser engraver. It has some cool features compared with the previous model that I had, the B4. Now we even have auto level. So just with one click on this touchscreen, the laser and the detector below will detect the distance and focus the laser. It arrives with a 30 watts or 60 watts MOPA laser, which is a huge amount of power, enough to cut or deep engrave the metal, cut glass, stone, acrylic, and a lot more, we'll see. So guys, I will use this new machine and try engraving a PCB with very small tracks, just 0.2 millimeters. Then I also want to make the SMD stencil and see the results. But before we use it, let's check some specs. It arrives in a cardboard box, well secured in place. You get the main electronics case connected to the optic module. And inside here we have the galvano actuators and the mirrors and the lenses. This time the body of the machine is kind of modular. You get this metal plate, so you don't have to engrave directly on top of the machine as we have to do with the B4 model. We also have the Z axis and this time it has a stepper motor inside for the autofocus, so it can move automatically. And the rest are just accessories. We get a roller and a rotating chuck for engraving or cutting round objects. And we also get the extra controllers, the manual, the screws and tools software, cables, and some engraving material samples. Assembling the machine actually took just a few minutes. I place the plate over the machine. I add the Z-axis with four screws on top and we add the laser module. The machine is ready for the first print and for that I'm using EasyCAD, which is a free software, but it also works with Lightburn software. As for the main specs, it has an accuracy of 0.01 mm. Don't believe me? Look at this small text that I've printed. It is so small that I have to use my microscope in order to see it. And that's awesome. As for the speed, it could reach incredible speeds, up to 10,000 mm per second. I've made a test here and it can totally do it. The quality might get a bit affected, but it can totally do 10,000 mm per second and it uses a wave blade of 1064 nanometers, so it's perfect for all the metals, but also leather, plastics, and so on. So let's test it. It's always good to start with some calibrating graphs. I wanted to make the same speed versus frequency and hatch test as before, but this machine has other settings that you could change, and that is the pulse width in nanoseconds, and this is a very important feature. I've made a frequency and hatch test, but the pulse width was too high. So I've lowered the pulse and as you can see, I start getting different colors of the oxide. And that's very cool. So using these graphs I could make this. The Mario face with different colors. The problem was that from the heat, the metal sheet bent and got out of focus, so the colors were not the ones that I wanted. 
but basically what you have to do is to edit the Mario picture in Photoshop and separate the head from the face, from the contour and other details. And then in EasyCAD I'm using different settings for creating different colors. And look how cool it looks. It's really fascinating that you could print colors on metals. I've also engraved on stone. I have these stone cup holders and I've made different tests and finally had some good results. You can make different tones of white and that's perfect for printing black and white pictures. I printed this tiger but it was set as a picture so it also printed the white square around it and I don't want that. I vectorized the picture and printed it again and look how nice it turned out. Only the tiger without the square around it. The machine engraves actually really deep into the stone, so you could even make stone stamps or something like that. Look how deep it went with only one pass of 80% power. I've also tested on other things, such as this chain tag, printed metal sheets, some rings, and this metal flask and so on. I've also engraved on metal cups. And to engrave on round objects, I've used the roller or the chuck. It took me some time to get used to it, but I was finally able to engrave on the stainless steel cup. And this gives you such an opportunity to create your own merch or personalize your stuff. For example, this flask turned out great. Now for copper, I've also bought these copper sheets and also obviously PCBs, because that's my thing. I've also bought these 0.1 and 0.05mm stainless steel sheets. And for the PCBs I've made a bunch of tests for removing all the copper or just vectorize the tracks. But for that you can check my previous video where I go step by step on how to engrave on a PCB using this fiber laser. Now let's say that I've made the tracks for this PCB. I apply the solder mask and cure it. I cut the board and now all I need is to solder the components. And to speed the process I need an SMD stencil. I first wanted to engrave a test file on these thin metal sheets, but the power was too high and directly bent the entire sheet. Then I've lowered the power and tried making some stencil for the Arduino chip. First the power was too low, but then I've got this. All I had to do was to slightly push the pads out, and I've got myself my first homemade stencil for SMD. Except that for some reason the first pad was never engraved. But look, I can place it on top of the Atmega chip pads and add solar paste. I think it made a pretty good job for the first test. Actually, when you create the vectors in Flatcam, I should probably cut a bit on the inside of the pad, so the hole will be a bit smaller, right? Then I've made the stencil for my PCB. It turned out great in just 30 seconds. The power was so high it could cut right through the metal. Now fix the PCB in place, you put the stencil on top and align it. Apply solar paste and remove the stencil and then we have the perfect amount of paste for all the components. So cool, right? The blue solar mask got a bit damaged, but I think this was a success, right? We can print the stencils at home for prototyping. I've also made the same stencil in a copper sheet of 0.1mm and it turned out great even easier than still. Just a minute for a message from the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. For a lot of my projects, it requires for me to make a PCB. Now I could make something like this, but this is just a prototype, it's ugly, it fails a lot, it's not that good. So a better option is to make a professional PCB like this one. Now I've been using the services of PCBWay for a long time now, and they always give me very good results, and for only $5 for 10 PCBs. And that means for me as a maker that it will help me a lot because I can make a first version, a second version and so on till I get the perfect result that I want for my project. A few years back that wasn't possible but now with these low cost PCBs for only $5 you can make any project that you want. So consider using the services of PCBWay and get very good tracks, good finish, uh, the color that you want for your PCB, the size that you want, the gold finish, the stencil for soldering the SMD and a lot more services on PCBWay.com including 3D printing, metal working with CNC milling and so on. So check PCBWay.com for more services. And then for the final tests I was able to cut a piece of glass mirror. It's not a perfect cut and you have to hit the glass a little bit to take out the part, but look. I was able to cut this round mirror. This can be very useful for so many projects. 
If you want to hold in place any object, you have these plastic brackets. And the printing plate is full of screw holes, so it's very easy to fix the objects in place. Even the rollers could be fixed on the metal plate with screws, if you want. And finally, you want a Bitcoin? Don't worry, I've made my own coin. Just vectorize the logo and engrave it on a golden coin and that's it. It looks so cool and with this you can make your own coins, details, business cards, gifts and so on. It opens so many doors for businesses and making stuff, so I hope that one day any maker would be able to have a machine like this. You have all the info about the machine on their Kickstarter campaign, which is going at full power. Links are below so check them out. I will soon release another full video on making PCBs, but this time with a lot more experience. I hope that you like my video and if so comment below or give me a like. Thanks again and see you later guys. So guys, here I am in my workshop, another video that ended, I hope that you like it. And the most important part, I hope that you have learned something new. Anyway, I just wanted to give a thank you to all my patrons, to you guys, to the viewers who are supporting me, liking my content, uh, sharing it, commenting below. Uh, just check my website, check my shop, check my t-shirts, all this kind of stuff will support my channel. So thank you very much once again.